What does the ISO mean on a microchip? Why won't my scanner read my pet's microchip? And do I need to register my dog's microchip? Well, keep watching. We will answer the most common microchipping questions and share some great resources that show you step-by-step -step how to microchip a dog. In this episode of the Pet Care Pro Show, we have Kevin joining us. Now, if you haven't already, we ask you to consider subscribing to the Revival Animal Health YouTube channel by clicking this little red heart or the subscribe button down below if you're watching this on YouTube. We regularly add new pet health videos you don't want to miss. Now let's talk microchipping. Kevin, how does a microchip work? Is it like a GPS that can trace where your pet is? Great question. Unfortunately, a microchip is not a GPS device and it cannot track your animal if it gets lost. A microchip is about the same size as a grain of rice. The microchip itself does not have a battery. Instead, it is activated by radio waves from a scanner that is passed over the area where the microchip is implanted. Each chip has its own identification number that shows up on the scanner's display screen. Perfect. Now, there are two types of microchips. There are ISO and non-ISO. What is the difference? Well, ISO stands for International Standards Organization, which means microchips labeled ISO are consistent worldwide. ISO microchips are required when an animal travels to a country other than the United States. These chips are easily read by the universal scanners used at the entities that are reuniting pets and owners, meaning there's a greater chance of your pet being recovered with an ISO chip. They are really are becoming the wave of the future. The American Animal Hospital Association recommends using ISO microchips, and so do we. Perfect. Now, what if your pet has a chip? How can you know if it's ISO or non-ISO? Well, ISO microchips have 15 numbers and always start with the number 9. Meanwhile, non-ISO microchips have either 9 or 10 digits and may contain a mixture of numbers and letters. Great. Now, let's talk about scanners. We find many times people think their microchips aren't working when actually the problem is with the scanner they're using. It's, if you don't have a universal scanner like this one right here, you really run the risk of your pet's chip not being detected. Yes, we hear about that happening a lot. When shopping for a scanner, you want to make sure you get one that can read both ISO and non-ISO chips. Those are called universal scanners. Scanners work by reading the frequency of the chip, and the ISO frequency is different from the non-ISO frequency. Universal scanners detect both ISO and non-ISO frequencies, but not all scanners can do that. We often get calls from customers thinking their microchips are defective, when actually it's their scanner that won't read the chip. What if your pet already has a non-ISO chip implanted? Is it safe to implant an ISO chip as well? Yes, absolutely. According to the American Veterinary Medical Association, pets can be implanted with both ISO and non-ISO chips. These two different frequencies will not interfere with each other. If your pet does have two chips, just make sure to keep the registration information updated for each microchip. Right, absolutely. And speaking of registration, just because a chip is implanted doesn't mean the pet owner's job is done. That's right. All microchips must be registered. Let me say that again because it's very important. You must register the microchips. Sometimes pet owners forget to send in the registration form, which can cause delays in reuniting pets and their owners. When a chip is detected in a lost animal and it is tracked back to the last person who registered the chip. Right, exactly. But if the new owners didn't update that registration information, the chip is then tracked back to whoever purchased the chips. Right, the person or organization that microchipped the animal then has to go through their records to determine which animal received that chip number and then determine who the animal went home to live with. This can be frustrating and time consuming and really delays how fast the pet and owner are reunited. Exactly. A microchip can't do its job if the information on it can't be traced. So for anyone connecting a microchip pet with its new home, what is the best way to ensure that that pet registration information is filled out? Prepaid registration cards allow the customer or the new owner to set up the microchip registration at the same time the pet uh, goes to the new home. The seller that implanted the microchip purchases the cards and when an animal is sold, the card is filled out with the new owner's information at that time. The seller collects the registration fee and sends in the card to transfer the registration to the new owner. Registrations can also be done online um, on the manufacturer's website 
or you can call Microchip Manufacturer and they can complete the registration over the phone. Great idea. Just make sure when ordering, you select the microchips that come with that prepaid form or make sure to add the prepaid registration forms to your order. If you are unsure or have any questions, you can always give our Pet Care Pros a call and they are always help, happy to help set you up with whatever you need. Yes, we're always happy to help. Now, is there a central database for registering microchips? Each manufacturer maintains its own database and you need to register each chip with the chip manufacturer. Now, what if you have found a lost pet and you've scanned it and you found a chip and you need to look up that registered, who the registered owner is? What is the best way to do this? You can go to petmicrochiplookup.org you can't register the microchip there, but you can look up an already registered chip. Okay, now for people who buy their microchips from Revival, we offer for free a service we call Reverse Lookup. How does that work? We want to help lost pets find their way home. So if a pet is lost and the new owner didn't register the chip in their name, the scan number will trace a microchip back to us. Right. You actually often get calls from a lot of rescues and shelters or even vet clinics who have found lost pets, but the microchip was never registered to the new owner. So instead, it shows Revival Animal Health as the pet owner. Yes. When this happens, we look in our records and we reach out to whoever bought the chip from us. Um, we will contact the customer and let them know and an animal has been found and where they can locate it. Then they can look through their microchip records and reach out to the current owner. Again, this is reverse lookup service only works on chips purchased from Revival. Absolutely. Reverse lookup is a great service, but we still do want to strongly encourage the owners to register that chip because it makes the reuniting process happen a lot faster and easier. Now, before we talk about the difference between the mini and the regular size chips, if you're finding this video helpful, click the like button below or type the phrase reunite lost pets in the comments below. Okay, now let's talk about microchip size. What is the difference between a mini and a regular size chip? The only real differences are the sizes of the chip and the needle used to insert the microchip. The mini chip is a little better for puppies since it's a much smaller needle, but both sizes, they do the same thing. Okay, good to know. Now, what about how to microchip? What are some good resources showing how to do that? You can do it yourself. If doing that, I recommend checking out the video how to microchip a dog. Or if you aren't comfortable inserting a microchip yourself, you can always contact your veterinarian. Okay, absolutely. And we have put a link to that video that Kevin mentioned called How to Microchip a Dog in the description below. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned that the microchip might cause cancer. Is there any truth to these concerns? According to the American Veterina Veterinary Medical Association, the risk that your animal will develop cancer due to its microchip is very, very low. And it is far outweighed by the improved likelihood that you will get your animal back if it becomes lost. Okay, so what about microchips moving around inside the pet? That's another concern. Yeah, when it comes to microchips migrating, that can happen, but it's very rare. Microchips are sealed in biocompatible glass or polymer covered by a sheath to prevent migration. So they typically stay in place. One piece of advice I tell new puppy owners is to ask your veterinarian to scan the chip each year when you go when your pet goes in for the annual checkup. Uh, that way you can make sure that it's still functioning and can be detected. And that's a great idea there. And thank you for answering all of these questions about microchips, Kevin. If you found this video helpful, make sure to share it with a friend who you think could benefit. And if you have questions or other microchipping tips, comment below to share with the Revival community. Remember, we all want to reunite lost pets. I'm Shelly with the Revival Education Team. This is Kevin, a Revival Pet Care Pro. Thank you so much for joining us on this microchipping episode of the Pet Care Pro Show. Hi, if you're watching on YouTube and new to our channel, consider subscribing to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on our newest videos. If you have more questions on microchips or any other pet health issue, call our Pet Care Pros at this number or check out our other pet health videos.